Have you ever played a game of Age of Empires where you were really eager to try out a brand new strategy or build order? And so you hop straight onto the ladder, you get ready to play, and you forget to take the time to make sure that the map is actually appropriate for the strategy you want to try? Yeah, if that's ever been you, then buckle in for this video, because this was me. I think you're going to enjoy it. Go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel if you will, I appreciate each of you to do that. We find ourselves today on Arabia. I'm in the blue, playing as the Aztecs, and I'm up against White Mamba in the red, playing as the Mongols. Now, if you happen to check out the last video that I had on the channel, which, by the way, before I say anything else, look at this. Look at this. This villager right here, just using up so much idle TC time, but taking a quick, you know, scenic walk around the town center. Not just one, no, two. Two scenic walks around the town center to then decide to go take care of this turkey over here. Ridiculous. Anyway, all right, but that's enough of that. If you happen to catch the last video on the YouTube channel, you'll know that what, uh, what I had for that video, I showed off the Aztec smush on Arena. And the whole idea of it is you are safe behind your stone walls, you rush up to the castle age, and you get out monks and mangonel. And you couple that with some eagle warriors, and with those three units, you can overwhelm your opponent much faster than they might expect on Arena. It's a really fun strategy. I encourage you to check out that video, because that was a blast of a match to play. This game was me trying the same strategy. Uh, in fact, this game came first. I was toying around with this Aztec smush strategy and thinking it'd be a lot of fun. And uh, there was just one problem. You know, I, I had favorited Arena. And I know Arena is a popular match, uh, a, a popular map to play on, so I just assumed I favored Arena, I get a match, it's gonna be Arena, right? Well, I did not ban Arabia, and that was a mistake. We find ourselves here on Arabia, and I don't even realize quite yet. I'm moving around with my scout, thinking, huh, this is kind of wide for, you know, an arena map. And it takes me a couple minutes to realize, wait a minute, this is not arena at all, this is Arabia. And I just decide, you know what, we're sticking with it. I, I, I mentally... I'm already sort of locked into this strategy. There's nothing stopping me from switching over to, you know, archer play or uh, nothing in the game that's telling me I have to go smush. But mentally, I'm already there. I'm locked into practicing this brand new strategy. I I've got the, well, I was going to say I've got the build order in my head, but to be honest with you, um, you know, I, I do actually swap over to, uh, you know, four on berries and kind of a more typical opening. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, Mangonel, Monks, uh, you know, Eagle Warriors, that's the play. We're going to be doing a smush. And so when I see it's Arabia, I said, well, okay. We're just going to smush on Arabia and hope that we don't get steamrolled in the Feudal Age by whatever the Mongols can throw at us. So this game ends up becoming wild, zany. I think you're going to enjoy it. Following that smush strategy, even though I'm moving my villagers around a little bit differently than I otherwise would, um, I am prioritizing food. So, you know, I've, I've got the four on wood, and otherwise I'm just going to stay on food until my 19th villager. I think it's the 19th, if I'm not mistaken. It's, it's 19 pops. Actually, it might be the next villager goes to wood. Let me see if I'm right about that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's going over to wood. And so we're going to try to get six on wood and two on gold and everybody else on food. That's the game plan. Come on, guys. There we go. There we go. All right. <clears throat> so, again, a, a very similar build order to what you saw in the last video, which was a lot of fun. Um, my opponent. Let's take a look over here. White Mamba. Playing as the Mongols, and uh, getting up to Feudal Age a little bit faster than I am. Which, honestly, when I saw that in-game, had me worried. Because I'm thinking, you know, with the strategy that's in my mind, what I'm worried is he goes up into the Feudal Age, he rushes me with scouts, and I'm so committed to the Fast Castle. 
with no walls, no defenses, that I just fall apart, right? <clears throat> so I was definitely a little bit worried about that when I saw the notification come in. But here's what I did not expect. These four villagers moving across the map from the top here. We'll have to keep an eye on them because the moves they make are going to define the tempo of this game. I am, the good news, doing a little bit better on the idle TC time. So I've got a slight eco lead. Yeah, I, I, I do happen to catch... Um, I did catch the scout moving around. Trying to lure in some deer. Again, just pretending this is arena. That's what I'm doing here. You know, just luring deer and... Just going with my typical Aztec smush strategy. Yeah, here we go. Here's the barracks. I'm actually surprised they threw down a house, and then I don't know if he ever builds this. This right here. Archery range. This is scary. And not just an archery range. This is actually the first thing that I see. A watchtower. He's trying to shut me off of my gold and also this wood line. It's not the worst tower in the world, I gotta say. <clears throat> now, what I would note, let me see, from his point of view, all right, he sees this gold, he sees this gold. He does not see the gold back here, which is going to be very important. Here we go. I'm in the cat. I'm in the feudal age. The good news is I'm almost up to the to the castle age. As it is, I almost have everything I need. I've got my five farms down. I have, you know, almost 200 gold. Going to put down a marketplace. Going to put down a blacksmith. I do not have any military buildings, and he already has archers in my base. Oof. Now, fortunately for me, I did have two lumber camps. I had, uh, if you happen to see the Humza Crumbs video I linked in the last video... Uh, he mentions how two lumber camps is more efficient. Uh, you do end up getting more more wood that way. So following his advice, I, I did build two lumber camps, and that ended up being a huge saving grace in this situation right here. Now I notice, maybe a little bit slowly, here we go, here's more vills on gold, right? I didn't notice that there was a hole I could plug this in and, and sort of at least temporarily keep him on this side of my base. This was really helpful. Yeah, he doesn't have upgrades, so he's having a hard time hitting his shots. And here is a saving moment. I don't think he realizes he's looking at other things. Two archers go down right away to the town center. Whew. Okay, it's not the end of the world. Keeping my calm and going up to the castle age. If he stays on archers, well, again, the smush, mangonel, and monks. And if I go heavy into mangonel, then they should deal with the archers just fine. The good thing for me, and I, I think this is maybe a learning opportunity for, you know, if you are... Uh, kind of learning AoE too. Let's look at this from Mamba's perspective. I really liked the initial tower. I think it was it threw me off of the gold. It threw me off of a, a wood line, which was useful. And then he followed up with archers, which was great. But he hesitated to actually get the archers in a position where it was really throwing off my economy. He is allowing me to breathe. And that's going to be a problem. Right? So here... Uh, with my barracks, I'm getting out some Eagle Scouts. Eagle Scouts uh, start the game with, yeah, two Pierce Armor. So they're not that bad versus Archers. Especially if I can get numbers on them. <clears throat> Look at this. Yeah, see, see these Archers right here? They're just kind of chilling. They're doing their own thing. But if he's not careful about microwing them, 
then I can actually take my own villagers. Actually, I, I think I take my own villagers and deal with this. Let's see. Over here, monastery, siege workshop. That's the game plan. Come on, here we go, here we go. Yep, he's not really paying attention. He's focused on other things. And, you know, if you're not going to use range for your archers, then you're really missing the point. And they do fall, even to villagers, they're going to fall pretty quickly if he doesn't actually... Uh, poor Letitia. She gets caught out. And I happen to catch at the last second that she has one shot and she's down. With her life, I recognize the only thing I can do is send her to the end of the map, taking three archers with her, and that's just buying me more time. She, she's dead no matter what, so I might as well try to buy myself some extra time by sending her to her fate all the way on the other side of the map. Meanwhile, massing up Eagle Scouts. Don't underestimate the Pierce armor. It's a beautiful thing. Especially now that I picked up uh, Scale Mail armor. That means that they have one more Pierce armor, and so... They're going to do a great job against those archers. Yeah, she finally goes down all the way over here. <clears throat> so at this point, I'm only two villagers behind... <laughs> here we go. This is a moment that's fun. I've got a monk out, and... Yeah, he goes down, but... I get an archer conversion off. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but... Honestly, I would rather maybe kept the monk behind and waited for some kind of night play. Uh, that's the main thing you want to use monks for. Or just heal up your, your eagle scouts. But this is going to be a game about Manganel and eagle scouts more than anything. There we go. I just took the eco lead. Ah, Mango goes down. If only Letitia had survived, she could have repaired that Manganel. You know? But, say lovey. The nice thing is, I mean, I'm in the Castle Age. Uh, these are still Eagle Scouts. You know, I have to go to my barracks and upgrade them into Eagle Warriors, which is a shame. But, uh, Spearman spawns on the wrong side of the barracks. He's going to have to walk all the way around, take plenty of shots from the Watchtower, shots from the Archers. Yeah, by the time he gets over here, a stiff breeze will kill the spearman, but you know he'll do something against the scouts, I suppose. And that's the idea, of course. It just gets spearmen out uh, to protect against light cav, and then just uh, mass up some mangoes. Now, meanwhile, I'm gonna just really quickly let's see what's going on over here. Got a bunch of ills on wood, a bunch of ills on gold, and only a few on food. Only five ills on food, so. Really, I think he's committing pretty heavily into the Feudal Age play. Commuting into Archers. Committing to Archers. Uh, this is... Ouch. There's a, a really delicate dance here where if the Archers get too close, they'll get hit by the Manganel. But if they're not close enough, then the Spearmen will deal with the, the Scouts. Right. Fortunately... Uh, come on, come on, come on. Will this... Will it stay up? Ah, uh, no, it goes down. But... Scout goes down with it. Alright, take a look at the seven archers over here. They're going to loop around and try to get some damage in. That's the bad news. <clears throat> now, when you're in the Castle Age, one of the things that you want to ask yourself is, when do I put my resources and my efforts into building a strong economy? You can get out multiple town centers, which helps you produce multiple villagers at the same time. And if you're in the Castle Age, your opponent is stuck in the Feudal Age, that can be a huge game winner right there. Even though you're not really doing damage, you're just escalating so much faster than your opponent, right? Well, um, I didn't want to do it right away because I, I wanted to get military out. If you hit the gas too quickly, you can get overwhelmed by feudal army. So I wanted to get some Castle Age army going. But I recognized now's a good time. It happened just as he started to attack with the archers. So I, I kind of got lucky. I still hate how these are scouts, though. I want them upgraded to warriors. The sooner, the better. Eagle warriors are the... Ooh, let's see what happens here. Nope, nothing. A monk down the drain. But, uh, you know, eagle, eagle scouts are 
you know, the, the Mesoamerican version of the Scout line. Eagle Warriors are the Mesoamerican version of the uh, you know, the Night line. So the better, I, the, the faster I get that upgrade, the better. Another wave of archers moving around from the other side here. And that one, are, we noticed the one, are, the one group got cleaned up by these scouts here. Now I've got six scouts moving in against six Feudal Age archers. And that is one of the things I am aware of is, okay, I, I haven't made the upgrade to Eagle Warriors, but these are scouts against Feudal Age archers. So I know that I'm not taking losing fights necessarily. Especially because, again, scouts, they've got all that Pierce armor. Yeah, these are favorable trades. The, these uh, Mongol scouts go down too. I'm feeling pretty good at this point. I did just lose a house, I think, but, you know, not the biggest problem in the world. Now, one of the things that I, I, I know, and a principle I take with me into strategy games, is the idea of opportunity cost. Anything that you do in a game is something that you're, you're having to pay for in some other way. If you're doing X, that means you're not doing Y. And an example of that is if you are investing resources, time, mental bandwidth into going aggressive, that means that you're probably weaker at home. You don't have defenses up. Your, your economy might not be as strong as it otherwise should. So I'm testing my opponent just to see how... You know, how strong is his base? Are, are there opportunities for free kills? Well, I didn't get a lot there. I think I did get a vil kill, if I'm not mistaken. You know, right now, I've, I've killed three to his four, which is not bad considering how heavily he's been pushing into my base. Um, but just testing him. And even without getting a whole lot of kills, forcing him to sort of put his mind back into his own base for a second helps put some pressure off of me. Here we go, another wave of feudal archers. More Eagle Scouts. Take a look at this. I got a Manganel coming up. I just see this opportunity. I see how weak he is over here. I see an opportunity to try to take him out at the same time as he's putting pressure on me. So we're going to try to play offense and defense at the same time. We got a Manganel coming up for defense while we go on the attack. Get him off gold. He doesn't need gold. You you just don't need that gold. Oof. Now, this is where... I do make a mistake. i keep eyes over here. I do make a mistake. Uh, these vil these uh, scouts are set onto aggressive mode. So they walk over. They see a farm. They say, ah, oh, let's, let's, let's kill that farm. Let's raise the farm. That's what we're there for. We're eagle warriors. We live to raise farms. And they just walk right into the TC's range of fire. And... Eagle Scout's down. <clears throat> Alright, but I got the Manganel over here. I still have a couple of Scouts that can uh, protect. Uh, I do see the Step Lancer coming in, so try to intercept that. Meanwhile, Archer's coming in, trying to get me off gold. Ooh, one bill down. Manganel's still alive. But again, aggressive Scouts, they move in. Here we go, here we go. Archer's here. Archer's, he's trying to pressure me in two different locations. But I got the scouts. Uh, he's chasing me. Now that, now that I have nothing defending the mango. They, they are weak to villagers to get close enough. I did get some kills. Uh, with the mangonel. On the vills. So that's something. Mango down. But at the same time. He's got to watch out here. He has to watch himself. Let's see. I'm getting up a second barracks. Oh, there we go. That's one, two, three, four. At least four archers down. And another mango's ready to intercept. Going once. Going twice. Boom. Shakalaka. Three more down. Two more down. There we go. Those archers just cleaned up by Manganel. And at this point, I have four Manganel on the field. 
I've got a monk, which, you know, one of the things that I think is important in, in, in a smush is sort of recognizing what strategy your opponent is taking. If they're going heavily into archers, well, more mangonel is going to be important, obviously. Um, but if they're going into light cav, it's helpful to get out a lot of spearmen. If they're going into heavy cav, then, um, you know, I, you want to back off on the monks if they're going into light cav. And if they're going into knights and step lancers, then you want more monks. So here, I've only got one or two monks, and, and that's that's all I need. He builds the second town center. I don't see it right away. I, I This mango walked right up, knocked on the front door, said, Hi, can I tell you about the great deal we have on, you know, flying boulders? Right? So, uh, fortunately, I caught it before White Mamba saw it. And here we go. Four mangoes putting the pressure on this town center. I love getting four mangonel up. It just feels like the the golden number of mangonel that you need in order to really put some devastating pressure on your opponent. Bill's going down. Oof, nice. Uh, take a look at this. I've got double his vill count at this point. Moving and take out the next town center. He sees the writing on the wall. And calls the GG. So this was a really fun match. This is all about you know staying calm under pressure. And uh, fortunately, I think White Mamba made some mistakes early that gave me enough breathing room to respond uh, and you know help me survive my own mistakes, of which I'm sure there were several. Probably the biggest one being pay attention to what map you're on before you mentally commit to a strategy. <laughs> like if you're gonna go with a smush, at least maybe wall up and. And, and kind of try to arena yourself, right? Uh, but, you know, he went in with the, the early aggression right away. I still love that tower. I think that is a good watchtower. And all he needed to do, put that watchtower down, you know, move a couple, scout a little bit better. He, if he saw the other gold, that probably would have ended me. He's got a tower here. If he puts a couple of archers on this gold right here and, you know, make sure I can't get over there. I'm probably dead, especially if I'm mentally committing to a fast castle monk mangonel strategy. You're not doing that without gold. So I think this is a, a you know a really good play, but uh, uh, you know learning to quick wall and sort of block off parts of your base is important. He wasn't paying enough attention, lost some of his archers early on, and uh, it's kind of one of those weird things about a strategy game where one or two archers at the beginning of the game can be worth a whole lot more than 10 or 20 archers towards the end of the game. So losing those two early was really devastating for him, I think. It kind of slowed his, his attacking tempo, gave me some breathing room, and I was able to turn it around and kind of pull off a, a weird defensive diet Arabia smush. Uh, you know, in, in Arabia. That's wild. Anyway, this was a really crazy fun game to play. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Thanks so much, guys. If you like these videos, leave a like, comment on the video, subscribe to the channel. I really love hearing from all of you. Thanks so much. Tell me how do you like to play the Aztecs. For now, this is the Iron Kaiser, signing off.